All right. Uh, thank you, John. I'm just going to jump right in here. Um, so as John said, uh, I'm an industrial designer. Um, it's very exciting to be here as, and those are going kind of fast, but anyway, <laughs> as an industrial designer here at the uh, GSD um, as a Loeb Fellow. Um, this redefinition of the built environment is kind of what my work is about, although it may be hard to see here. Um, there are a lot of pretty pictures going by, so, uh, you know, I'm a little more, I guess I could say, superficial than my other fellows, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of that. Um, I'm into making things. I'm into um, how the making of things in my position uh, in this kind of exclusive world of design has a kind of transformative power. Um, how, uh, given my identity and given this state of the world, um, I happen to be the first uh, African-American designer to work with all of my clients worldwide. And it's 2018 and things shouldn't really be that way. So when we look at uh, the potential for a more pluralistic approach to what is the design world, um, what is the built environment, um, how does design uh, connect to community, and how do we make things? Um, there's a lot of questions uh, that we have to ask. Um, the work for me comes uh, directly out of uh, my education in industrial design at the Institute of Design in Chicago. Um, I went on to study architecture at Columbia University, although I've never practiced architecture. Um, I do have uh, a strong interest in the other creative arts. Um, I follow contemporary art very closely. I follow fashion. I follow architecture. And I have clients in all of those fields. Um, since 2005, I've uh, collaborated in over 10 countries with dozens of different artists and groups um, all over the world. Uh, Senegal, Rwanda, Kenya, Ghana, India, Mexico, Peru, uh, Indonesia, <laughs> um, Haiti with the Clinton Global Initiative. A lot of this work began for me as a product development consultant um, with not-for-profits like Aid to Artisans here in the States um, or 10,000 Villages, which some of you might know, which I believe is the oldest nonprofit connecting design to the developing world. Um, like I mentioned, the Clinton Global Initiative. Uh, and Design Network of Africa, uh, in Ghana, et cetera. Um, I went from there to thinking about how, um, how do I connect kind of both sides of the ways that I'm working? Uh, how do I connect what's going on in Europe for me with all of my international clients, um, manufacturers that some of you might know, I'll just list a few for you, that I've had the privilege of working with, B&B Italia, Boffi, Capellini, uh, Daydon, um, Missoni. I was a consultant to Missoni for almost nine years, and that was a very formidable experience because they were like a family to me. And my relationship to textiles is very much uh, part of the work. Um, let me see, on and on and on. So, so how do I connect that very uh, small world, but very influential world of what we consider design with a capital D, to the rest of the world to uh, what Mike talked about is the other 90%. Um, I think that we as designers have to kind of reinvent ourselves in a 21st century model. Um, we don't have to think of ourselves as simply signature designers. Like uh, the way that I'm working here is fairly traditional. Um, in terms of I'm designing for a client, uh, the client is uh, producing the work, the client is marketing the work, the client's distributing the work, and uh, my signature or my name is associated with the work. I think today we have to think of designers as a kind of conduit through which ideas flow, as a collaborator uh, in a way that can connect to community and then connect to distribution. Um, very early on, you may have seen a black triangle uh, that's called the development triangle, and that's a kind of economic model that I developed for Aid to Artisans back in 2005 uh, when I first started working for them. Part of the problem of collaborating with not-for-profits in these places in the world is that they have a very limited budget, and they go in uh, with funding for only three months or six months, and in a way, uh, they don't have a longer-term project in mind. Coming from uh, 
the kind of commercial world, let's say, I went in um, into what can be considered design boot camp, uh, my first trips to South Africa, where I had to work with over 12 different artists and groups in one week. And they were asking me questions like, you know, uh, <laughs> who, who's going to buy this? Um, uh, when do we get paid? Uh, how do we package and distribute this? And all of a sudden, I realized my role as the designer had to kind of be rethought. And thinking about that development triangle once again, what's missing and what is always missing is distribution. So I began building a bridge from uh, those manufacturers or those producers in different places around the world with uh, my kind of uh, international manufacturers in Europe. And we did some projects like that, and some of them got a lot of press, and some of them were very uh, successful in a media way, but in my opinion, they were complete failures. Um, I think we may have sold, with Capellini, for example, uh, silicone vo vo um, vase and bowl that you may have seen, uh, we may have sold maybe 15 of these. Uh, this bowl cost uh, something like, I would say, $5 to produce in South Africa. Um, we paid the artisan something like $50 a day to produce these bowls. In a day, they could make four of them. We went on to sell that bowl to Capellini for about $150, and guess how much they sold it for? Uh, about $900. So how many of you want a $900 silicone bowl? As beautiful as it is, it's a little bit difficult. So we quickly realized that that model wasn't really working for us. And then I tried to start my own brand. Um, <laughs> Mikhail and I joked yesterday about how today was going to be all about failures. <laughs> uh, I tried to start my own brand, and, and uh, that's incredibly hard. I don't know if any of you have ever considered that, but it's nearly impossible without uh, a huge degree of funding and a huge network for distribution. So. We sold a few products once again, but you know, I'm talking about how I'm thinking about or wondering how can I connect to, um, I don't know, dozens of, of artisan collectives that I've collaborated with over the years. How do I, how do I actually get them working on these kinds of products? And that's been the problem. My commercial work continues. Um, I continue to work with uh, all of the big brands, et cetera. Um, we're doing more and more and more interesting projects like that. Um, some of them I've managed to kind of convince to produce in a certain way. Um, we like to talk about bringing the hand to industry. So as a kind of tool for transformation uh, within the factory, this is kind of our way of working. Um, but for some of the clients, it's just not applicable. And, uh, you know, I'm here at uh, GSD with this Loeb Fellowship wondering um, what the next move is. How do I take all of this experience and all of this work and really develop a, a new platform for um, reaching a broader audience? So once again, uh, the problem goes back to distribution. Um, we have to think about, or I, I'm trying to think about, um, if I could get uh, one person here making something in ceramics, another person here making something in glass, another person on the other side of the world making something in textile, could we link those uh, different manufacturers together and sell a product uh, to all of you here? So how do we um, begin to look at new distribution channels and new means of uh, how community meets craft, meets technology. So these are some of the things that I'm thinking about. And uh, I'm interested in uh, welcoming all of your feedback, et cetera. And I'm looking for assistance. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to do the, the shout out here. I'm, I'm definitely looking for help in this, uh, a research assistant, a design assistant, um, multiple interns. I don't know who. Uh, of you here might be interested in helping, but this is a, a project that I'm hoping to um, pursue at some level in depth while I'm here as a Loeb Fellow. Um, and uh, I'm hoping you can help me with that. Thank you very much.